Hello, everyone. Welcome again to another episode of the Egg the Airway Business Roundtable. Damon Pastalka here, my partner Andrew Cross. We got Kurt Anderson and Gretchen Lindell with us today. Just want to do a quick intro on Kurt and Gretchen. Kurt's going to do a detailed intro on uh, Gretchen, so I'll do that. Kurt Anderson, you guys have probably met him before, uh, owner of B2B Tail, um, manufacturing e-commerce expert. If you haven't heard him speak on it, ask him when he's speaking. Get on and listen to it, man. You know, he's got, he just, he's a, he's the, um, what did I, what did I say about it? He is the helper of digital nomads find their way in e-commerce. And, uh, and with us today, we've got Gretchen Lindell, who teaches teaches people how to understand their customer persona. So I'm happy today that we're going to be talking about customer personas or avatars. A lot of people out here have worked on them before. Um, we've worked on ours a lot. I know we've got a lot more to learn. But if you have not thought about this, uh, this is something to think about very, very intensely because the better you understand the customers, the better you can um, give them, you know, talk to them, provide solutions and all those kind of things. So without further ado, I'm going to let Kurt talk. I'm just going to tell you our format. I'm excited for our format today because we're going to talk for a little bit. Then we're going to go back to the tables and do some work. Then we're going to come back group work, and then we're going to come back uh, and uh, talk about what we what we did at the table. So, from there, I'm going to let Kurt take it over. Hey, thanks, Damon. Good morning, everyone. What an incredible honor to be here, filling the shoes from uh, our veterans a couple weeks ago, and Professor Pete and Khan and Dr. Ilya and Joe and everybody that gets on the stage. So this is an honor. So today we're going to talk about uh, persona exercise, and it is just so critically important for our businesses. As Damon said, I'm always hammering. Uh, I do a lot of workshops or webinars on uh, e-commerce strategies, and man, through the whole thing, I'm just always hammering uh, how important that persona or that ideal that, you know, trying to attract that ideal dream client. We like to call it our soulmates. How do we attract that soulmate? So it's, uh, it's my honor and privilege today to introduce Gretchen Lindell. And Gretchen and I go back a ways, and I see Dr. Ilya is coming live from Greece, I think, today. So um, Gretchen is a, a dear, dear friend of mine, and I have had the honor and privilege of working with Gretchen in different capacities. Ironically, I, I, just, she, I was just a client of hers. I just hired her a few weeks ago. I have a very small team, and I uh, decided, hey, I need to go through that persona exercise. Gretchen is a person that I, I lean on. And just to give an idea of, of um, how wonderful, how fabulous, is that a word, that Gretchen Lindell is. So I had a client in June, and this gentleman, uh, Upper West Side Manhattan guy, and he's one of those clients I know, every, and I've had the honor and privilege of meeting, I think, most of you, and if we haven't, love to get on a call with you. But uh, this client, you know, I know all of you always bring your A, A-plus game. This was one of those clients that you needed to have your A-plus, plus game, right, Gretchen? And so... We were, I do a. I went to an e-commerce audit on his website on his business, and and this guy deals with like Intel and Build a Bear, great clients, and um, I'm like, man, I really feel that you need to go through a persona exercise. He was a little bit resistant, been in business for 30 years, and I bring in Gretchen, and while we're going through that persona exercise, I was watching the expression of this client, and the word as we're going through that exercise was. Uh, all the time epiphany epiphany and we went offline and he goes kurt he goes gretchen i've been in business for 30 years and again very successful businessman he goes i've been in business for 30 years and gretchen shined an entirely new light on my business and showed me a persona that i just didn't even realize that was out there so with that i'm going to turn it over to uh, everybody give a warm virtual round of applause to gretchen lindell Hi. Ooh, uh, Hi, Kelly. Thank you. Oh, tear, <laughs> tearing the house down. Listen to all that applause. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, take a moment to say uh, thank you to my esteemed colleagues here up on the stage as well. Uh, what an honor it is for me to meet uh, both Damon and Andrew and certainly to work with Kurt as closely as we have been this summer. That was kind of a benefit of COVID, I think. Um, but what an honor it is too 
to meet this room full of greats. Uh, already this morning, you have really wowed me with everything that is going on. So I, I'm just excited to share this message today. Certainly, I'm going to do my best to multitask and to watch the chat as I go. But um, we have so much that we'd like to cover. And I really get through to the presenting part so that you guys have enough time to work through this. Um, my screen is switching over here as we're loading the presentation. Okay. So um, again, thank you so much for having me today. This is very exciting. And um, I, I do want to make a quick note that we had a, an experience yesterday where my screen got totally taken over from my presentation. That happened again. So if there's an interjection, interjection, Kurt or Damon or Andrew, if you could just give me a voice interjection, then I'll know yep. to pause and address some questions here. Yep. But I'm going to go ahead and we're, we're move good forward. Um, just excellent. Very good. So this is a, a quick blurb on me. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it because today is all about you. Um, but I'm an instructor at our local uh, college, Jamestown, uh, Jamestown Community College, as part of the SUNY network of colleges. I'm a digital marketing consultant, an author of a blog called Mama Works, and now I'm the founder of the Mama Works School, as well as my most important job, which is being a mother. So, um, but why are we here today? And I'm going to ask this question. I have screen up, which obviously you can all see why we're here today. But really, my question is, who wants to save some money? Oh, that sounds about the same reaction as the applause before, but I'm guessing that there's a lot of uh, chatter on the message board there. Yes, I'd like to save some money. So now my second question, um, through my assumption, is who wants to make some more money? Mm -hmm. How's it look? How's the, the everyone, chat look? I think everyone's everyone thumbs up. Everyone? Yeah, oh, it's okay. rolling. It's All right, rolling. very good. Okay, good, good. Because that's what I figure is the answer, but I don't want to make assumptions <laughs> here. Um, we're here today to get to know your ideal e client, your e customer, work through some of this chaos, through um, changing the way we connect with each other so that you can create marketing spaces that will convert to sales. So to do that, we're going to build a key persona. So during today's presentation, we're going to define what a persona is and tell you how it's a little bit different than your target audience. Um, you are going to walk through a rapid key persona exercise and then share your ideas with your table and then the team at large. And then we're going to pull everything together to see if we can share some of those epiphany moments like our um, client from New York City had. So just a brief background because I don't generally like to walk into anything without our knowing what we're getting into. So just a quick definition of what a persona is, and you can all look this up on Wikipedia. A persona, also known as a user persona, customer persona, or buyer persona, in, in user-centered design, and marketing is a fictional character created to represent a user type that might use a site, brand, or product in a similar way. So we're actually personifying one part of your target audience. So we're, we're actually creating um, a profile or someone that we can kind of look at and go, this is a, per this is a real person. We're, we're adding some value to understanding not only the nuances of a target, but how we might change the way we speak to a particular person within our target. Um, some quick information about how this developed. It might shine some light onto a historical um, idea of personas. Uh, Alan Cooper, who's a, a renowned software designer, uh, started use it, use, using user personas in digital design in the 1990s. And around the same time, Angus Jenkinson pioneered the concept of understanding customer segments as communities with a coherent identity over in the land of marketing. So since the 90s, uh, Cooper continues his work with user-centered design and much more. 
the reason that I'm telling you that um, that keyword user centered design, it's kind of a flip the script for a lot of people when we talk about marketing. Um, very often we have um, businesses that are saying, I have this great product. Look at my product. It's so amazing. Look at my service. I am the, the best at this. Rather than switching it around and thinking about how our clients or our customers are using this information, how how can we help them by providing them these great services? So it's a little flipperoo in the way that we think. But if you think back to the 1990s when, I mean, I I don't want to make any age assumptions here, but as I was seeing, you know, the group of folks within um, the presentation hall on the floor today, I think we can all remember the 1990s and, and what was happening in technology and how it all started at that time to be very like, verbose and it was a lot of push marketing and you can see the way the world is changing now where we're pulling people in to learning about us through storytelling through groups like this groups on Facebook so it's really a shift in perspective so today we're going to use personas to help guide digital design or your digital marketing um, and we, when we have a goal in mind, like sales, we want to make sure that we're using the correct language, colors, spatial cues to encourage our users to take action. So are you ready for a rapid key persona exercise? Yep. So this is exactly like it sounds. A key persona is taking one person out of your target audience and building that person out. So we have customers who come in all shapes and sizes, but we're looking for in this exercise, you can run this exercise over and over again. When you're getting started with key personas, we usually tell um, our, our, our clients to use pick like one to three maybe key personas because otherwise it gets very cumbersome to design for that many personas. So today we're gonna work on one. So I want you to settle in on one. Um, and think about if you could show me a photo of the person you hope to buy your product or service, what will he or she look like? Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, and I'm gonna give you a moment here. Um, if you could take out a piece of paper, open up a, a office document on your, your um, computer there and just flesh out this visual organizer for me. So draw a box in the center maybe turn the paper so it's in a landscape instead of a portrait format. I think you can all still see yeah, me yeah, on the yeah. screen. So I'm gonna hold my paper like, okay, so instead of doing this, do this. And then just quickly draw these seg these little, uh, the box and the diagonals. I don't know what that complex shape is really called, but I'll give you a moment to do that. And then you're calling upon drawing skills of which I have none. So, oh well, I'm not checking anyone's work. I'm just, I'm just helping us walk through the exercise. Just drawing the, <laughs> the line across the page right. is tough. No. Well, it doesn't yep, have to be perfect, it. and we can, come, we can come back to it uh, if you want to send it to a fiber professional for some bells and whistles <laughs> later on. So I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> over to show you what we're looking at in terms of how this will eventually lay out. And so right in the middle are our demographics. You don't need to fill this information in because in a moment I'm gonna give you prompts okay. for each one of these sections, but this is just what, what the whole is going to look like. So right in the middle, um, we're going to name our soulmate, our, our, uh, our dream e-client. This We're gonna give this person a name. And, her, I'm so sorry, but I'm going to name yours like the Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> Is that the birds? Oh, you? <laughs> there you go. All right. All right. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Staying on topic here, <laughs> we're going to go and look at our first set is demographics. So this is super important. Step one, you need to give that soulmate, your key persona, a name. And I don't care what the name is, but this is an important part of the process because we're personifying one part of that 
segment that you're trying to reach. And without this, we kind of lose the idea of a person. Is it our our, our yeah. name is always yeah. where we start. So and just jot something down. It might change. You might call this person Bob now and then go, oh, it's really not Bob, it's Roberta or but something here is better than nothing. Um, oh, so fast. I'm just going to give you a moment to think of a name. Okay. All right. Everyone's got it. I'm sure. I'm sure you did. That. Okay. So now within that box too, what I'd like you to do are to think about some of the key demographic information about Bob, Roberta, KP, your soulmate, whatever the name is here. Um, and demographics are information that include um, things related to one's identity. So their gender identification, racial identification, religious, um, cultural, things like that would all come into this box. If you can put in their education, if you have a sense of where they live, even better. So if you can drill down to, is this somebody who's located in the suburbs? Is this more of somebody who's an East Coast, West Coast person? All of that information you would plunk in this area. So I'm gonna quiet down for a moment and give you a little time to think about this. Uh, if you're wondering too, like, well, where would I get this information? I'm not sure. And I feel a little weird putting this kind of information down. Um, this is not something meant to be stereotypical. This is meant to pinpoint a person. So this isn't everyone, this is someone. So these aren't large, vast, over um, overarching ideas. We're just, it, it's, it's very, low risk is you can make choices like gender. And, yeah. and I'm gonna give you just a little um, anecdote about this because we're so careful about it. Um, Mike O'Connor, you, you, you made a fantastic joke earlier when I met you at the table and really got me giggling. And thank you so much for making this a little bit easier for me to walk into a group of folks that I've never met before. You, you really softened kind of that experience for me and I appreciate it. And one of the things that you had mentioned was the Me Too movement and that, you know, you made a, a little quip about it being, people being very sensitive and you're not wrong. In, in today's climate, people are, extremely sensitive about, um, you know, just making overarching decisions about people. Um, but the point I want to make here is Kurt had mentioned earlier that we were working together um, for his own business just a couple of weeks ago, and we really got stuck on this idea of gender. And boy, he it's like, he, I'm one of those people that I'm going to find the answer. This, there was a group of very sensitive and savvy professional sitting at the table going, well, you know, we it is 2020 and this this executive should be a woman and we're all okay with that. And believe me, I am as liberated as they come. I'm educated. I am, you know, I'm living this life of creating my my own path to success. But I'm like, I gotta tell you, I really feel in my heart that this is not a woman. And the group went away, okay, well, gender doesn't matter. And I walked out and talked to Kurt about this later on. And I said, Kurt, like, it's just deep down in me. It's not a woman. And so then I went and did some research. And you know what? <laughs> the research that I found based on census data shows that this particular key persona that we were creating is not a woman. That's okay. Yeah. We, we can say we hope someday things will look differently, but here we are today. And what that person looks like today is not a woman, it's a man. So you make those, you can go ahead and plunk that information and not feel badly about it at all. Yeah, and we, we have to in our business because our, our our demographic is a male that's 55 plus years old, you know, 55 to 70 years old, it is. Because when you look at business owners, they're, what is it, 70, 80% of them are, are male. It's, that's just the fact. Yeah. Like you said, the facts are the facts. So your persona, that's passive all facts, yes. We, you have to look at your ideal when you're looking at this or your most probable, so. Yes, I love that too. Probable, ideal and profitable, yep. right? And so if we're gonna take those decisions, let's look for the people, we're, gonna, we're spending this time because I asked you who wants to save some money. Well, if we're 
spending a ton of money redesigning a website and we haven't considered who this person is, then, you know, maybe like, maybe we'll shoot the moon and it'll hit our, our key mm -hmm. persona perfectly, but probably not. If we're not feeding that information to a web designer, they're not getting paid to know that. You kind of have to give them that information. All right. So demographics is always kind of, I got to you know, really tightly walk that rope. But I think we're all on the same page. Put the information down. If you want to know where to get that information, you can find it from your historical data. Look to your analytics and then also um, go with your gut sometimes and back it up with, with real data that's out there. Okay, question set number two, what are their interests? So now this is really part of that personifying this person. What are they into? So is your KP binge watching something on Netflix? Are they listening to a particular podcaster? What types of books are they reading? This seems really fluffy, but it's how we get to know each other, right? So if I want to know what KP is up to, I'm going to ask them, hey, what, do you, what are you doing? What are you reading? Who do you know? Who do you like? So we can find some common ground with them. Yep. All right. I'm going to, because we want to get to the table so you can continue this discussion there, I'm going to go on to set number three, which is aspirations and goals. So here we're looking at, we know where KP is, where does KP want to be? So what does KP want out of life? Is KP motivated by being the best of the best and you know being a total workaholic or is KP motivated by, I wanna buy a sailboat and spend the rest of my days out at sea? Can you ascertain any of those things? What is KP distracted by? Um, and I love this question, who would KP like to be when he or she grows up? Can you get a sense of who this person is? All right. Okay. And somebody definitely stop me if I'm no, no. going too quickly. Those are great. Those are great. Oh, excellent. Okay. So in our next session section, I think we should be down below the demographics now. This is KP at work. Um, so because many of you are business to business clients, um, taking that into account. What challenges does case KP face at work? So um, I guess if you shift it around and you think of this question in a different way, what kinds of solutions does KP need to be more successful at work? So I have a this question. A, this is a harder question. Go ahead. Yes, please. Yeah. Just, you know, when you're, you know, when you're figuring out what they're into and the personas too, and, and in our demographic, um, you know, especially when you said one who's a workaholic, you know, uh, and everything's about work or the other one who wants to live on the beach, but we kind of have both maybe yes. what do we do in that, in the exercise, you know, cause there's, I mean, we're looking at business owners over 55, but, yeah, some of them are workaholics. Some of them are more family oriented, you know, and are spending yeah. more, more time away from work, you know, or is maybe it's not a relevant question for ours. I love that question because I, mm -hmm. it, I, it could matter and maybe it doesn't. So there's, I'm going to flip the screen to the next yep. question here, which is the sales process. Um, and the reason why is you'll see about uh, three quarters of the way down the screen. Um, I offer some pain points there. So time, money, authority, and support. So someone who's a workaholic, they their pain points would probably be time, right? If you're a workaholic, you're probably pretty successful, pretty motivated and getting stuff done, but you don't have a lot of time to beat around the bush because you don't want to spend a lot of time doing that when you could be spending that time working toward making more progress somewhere else. Whereas if it's the person who... Um, is just trying to build up as much wealth as possible. I, it could be money. It, it it might matter. It might not. I think it really drills down to you know working that persona out and going. Is let's say Bob is the one who is the workaholic, and Ted is the person who is just trying to retire and live on the sailboat the rest of his days and and write books. Um, if you start to lay those 
people out together and and they look pretty similar, I think you could probably mesh Bob and I don't remember. Did I just say Ted? I'm, now I'm thinking Bill and Ted and I'm lost yeah. my, <laughs> my train of thought. You could Definitely. probably mesh them together. But once you start looking at them, you might realize, wow, these are two separate people who really need their own spaces. Um, they they might need their own landing pages or they might need to be connected with it in different areas of like social media. So I, I know you guys do a bulk of your business through LinkedIn. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I don't know that I fully answered your question. I think the answer is really maybe. Yeah. It, it depends on once you start to flesh it out, how vast the differences seem between the two. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So number five, we've got the sales process here. What do we need to know about the sales process? Yes. So what we want, basically what we want is to convert the sale, right? And so what we want to do is make it as easy as it can be for someone, for our, our avatar, our key persona um, to, or a soulmate to do that. So um, I think from the side of a marketer or a business that's um, soliciting our key persona, we want to know what is what's painful and how can we make it easier for them? So my top question here is COVID-19 slowing everything down. And if it is, is there anything that your business can do to help speed things up on the other side? So is it uh, having virtual meetings? Is it, you know, connecting in non-traditional ways to help lessen the burden on the side of the buyer and, you know, put it more to us on the side of sales. Yeah. Okay. Um, most of you probably because you're here, so I would wipe this off the table, but the question is there a problem with access to technology? For you guys, that's not a concern, but it could be if the population were even older, you know, like, so if you, you had said male 55 and up, if it were men 70 and up, then you might need to reconsider um, spending so much time in LinkedIn and then find another way to meet your audience or your key persona. Again, um, is it time, money, authority, or support? So if it's time, how can we speed things up for someone, you know, make it easy for them to get through thinking of something similar to an express lane. Um, if it's money, can you offer different pricing structures uh, or get buy-in with a low cost solution? So this is obviously, I mean, maybe it's not so obvious on my side. Uh, when you get to a sales page, you know, you get to your, um, get to a landing page and they have that those three levels, you know, like I'm the newbie freebie right here. And I kind of fit in the middle here on this person. And then I'm the high end person. Those are created for people who have a pain point of money because we can get those, the freebie people in, get them to love a service, you know, connect with a brand and then start to drip in um, different ways to grab some money from them. Um, authority. So how can you get to the person in authority? That's a good one to know. Obviously, if that person doesn't have the authority to make choices, they're not going to be able to convert that sale. And then also support. Are there things that you can provide to help people um, convert the sale? So one other question I put within here is, is KP uh, considering one of your competitors? And if they are, they might tell you, they might not, you know, they might just kind of be window shopping. But if you can find out why they're considering going with a competitor, that could help, you know, strengthen your strategy because you you might want to do what the competitor's doing only better. Or maybe you said, you know, you actually might not be my KP. So it's okay. We're going to stay in this lane. Um, this is kind of uh, different because you, most of you work within, you know, an office business structure, but my husband actually owns his own business um, and he is in landscaping. And um, a couple of years ago, we were talking through his process and um, we did a very similar exercise to this. And he has lots of people calling him for service all the time. And he has to be an advocate to say, I, you know, I appreciate you're wanting to work with me but in a very nice way, you're not my customer. You know, these people are my customers. So he actively um, 
you know, tries to connect with people who are out of towners, retired folks. If people are just looking for a one-time service, it doesn't really work for his business, yeah. his business model. So, and that's not always easy to tell a customer we're not a great fit together, but if we're looking, you know, for the, the long range of business success, sometimes that's important. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, whew. you know, yeah, we just, um, you know, this makes me think we were having a, a chat with uh, Walter Crosby yesterday on evaluating sales talent too, but he was talking about, you know, when they, when they evaluate salespeople too, the one thing that salespeople have their most precious commodity is their time and yes. you know not not understanding the right customer you can you know that's right, that's done. what you lose yeah and, yeah and you lose the time well, time that you could be spent landing the correct customer so you know and at that the bottom that's what really gets you that's what you're you know it's money <laughs> it's at the end absolutely. of the day absolutely yeah absolutely yeah. but w thank you so much for for bringing up that point um, and I went over a little bit, but we really want to give you guys some time to connect at your tables and discuss um, how your key persona is fleshing out here. Hopefully you have some ideas and a draft and can take some time while talking with each other and really hone in on this. Um, and then in a moment, well, I guess not in a moment, we're going to give you some time to connect. Um, and then I think Damon, you had mentioned you were going to choose a spokesperson from each yeah, table. I'll, just, I'll, I'll we'll bounce. I'll bounce the tables, and I'll let people know who's going to be speaking. Or when we go down to the tables again, we're going to shut the presentation off, and then we'll do that, and we'll let you uh, do a little bit of work on personas, talk about them a bit, and then just come back and say, "Hey, what are some interesting things you learned?" And uh, talk for just a moment from each table, and open it up to a few more questions and we'll be done and people can talk to you afterwards and all that good stuff. Am I missing anything, Andrew? Yes. Nope. But, uh, and also the presentation, uh, uh, Gretchen's going to go ahead and post yeah. that in the chat. Yeah. Post, go well, ahead and so. post the link to the chat or the presentation in the chat now, and then people can refer to that if they want to, to, or use it later. But um, we're going to kick the presentation uh, off of presentation mode. So people are going back to the tables right now. Excellent. Thank you. All is. right, back from the tables. This is the first time we've done this, so I hope that it was uh, it was fruitful for you to discuss this a little bit and, and come on up. So now we're going to start to bring some people up from the tables and, and let them talk a little bit about, A, what they learned or, or something uh, about the persona of theirs or someone at the table that was really... Uh, interesting so gretchen what would you like to add to that before we start bringing some table people up i just have to say that you have a fantastic group of attendees here and and i apologize i really wanted to bop around but it's so hard because everybody is so interesting so you get caught like listening to how phenomenal the work is and and all of the things that people are doing i do want to give a, a shout out to ira bowman who just did a great job of jumping in and facilitating the conversation and was really leading his group in a wonderful direction. Plus he also gave me a cool tip about some sunglasses. So I'm, I'm or not sunglasses, <laughs> re regular glasses that I'm really looking forward to checking out. So nice, nice. Well, um, great. Well, we're going to start with the first table and Dan bigger. Um, Dan's going to come up here and then we are going to um, continue on with a, a few more. I'm going to, I think I've got them written down here. Um, and uh, so Dan, what, what was it that you, you guys discussed or you learned at your table that was interesting to share? Well, our, our table didn't nearly uh, really break down a specific persona or something. Oh, can you hear me? Yep. yep. Okay. So we didn't really break down, but Andrew has had a lot of experience with I this. I don't see him. Uh, he's there. He's there, Andrew. I see him on the on the screen. We're fine. All right. So, you know, I, I've sat in meetings like this a bunch of times and trying to you know break down personas. But my company is very, very broad and I have struggled like hell with this process. Uh, and Andrew actually gave me a lot of clarity with it. You know, so, you know, we deal with 15, 16 different industries. We deal with startups all the way up to multi-million dollar corporations. You know, and, and he sort of broke down that, you know, it really can be, you know, because I'm dealing with quality people, 
I'm dealing with buyers. I'm dealing with engineers. So I, you know, trying to get all that into one single person is for me impossible. So what are your thoughts around that Gretchen? Well, I think that you're absolutely right. And, you know, it, it's about kind of digging into a couple to start with. And then once you get the pattern going, and I love that idea of a matrix, how cool is that to, you know, w once you start to build out um, what a couple of these people kind of look like, then you, the whole point of this is that at the end of the day, this information should help you to sculpt your language and your tactics and, and the way that you connect with your buyers, you know? Yeah. So um, for a company like you that clearly has a broad spectrum of different customers, I, I really do love that idea of a matrix. Very cool, Dan, and thanks I can understand a lot. It. We're gonna let Jeff Graham talk cool. a little bit and Dan, I'm gonna put you back and bring somebody else up, thank you. So Jeff, what did you guys learn at your table? So um, we kind of dove into a couple different things, but the one I think question that we have, or one of the challenges is, is obviously breaking things down by demographic, breaking things down by, you know, all kinds of things, everything from social economic issues. But the issue is, is sometimes I think businesses, and, and this might be just, you know, what kind of we thought was like, you know, you might have a beer with somebody because you like them and they're your friend, but it doesn't mean that you always will do business with those type of people that have the same ideas. Right now we have kind of a climate where, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people can't, you know, or won't say what they feel or like or who they're going after or why they're, who their customer is. And I was just, one of my old clients, we used to, they were, the owner of the company was really left, but all their customers were really right. Meaning like, you know, from a political standpoint. So he sold products that you carried every day, guns, um, wallet, the, you know, EDC, everyday carry stuff. It's like a subculture, but he was an outdoorsman and that demographic, but that demographic was in fact his customer. Um, you know, how do you deal with the fact that your customer isn't who you'd have a beer with? I guess is, is one of the takeaways. That's a great question. What do you think on that, Gretchen? I, I think that's, well, I think it's a fantastic uh, question. Um, I don't necessarily think you have to be close friends with your customers. I think it makes, you know, in a holistic life choice, I think it makes doing business a hell, hell of a lot easier and, and nicer if your customers can be your friends. Yeah. Um, but this is also about finding those areas of common ground. So I guess, in terms of a business, that business owner, what's more important to them? Getting along with the customers or making money? You know, that, so that, that value choice in terms of being a business person. At the end of the day, you, you still want to connect with your customers. So maybe, you know, if money trumps my, my politics, then I can put aside some of those concerns and really serve my customers well. Yeah, I don't. It, yeah. It's a complex one, Jeffrey. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you wanted the complex ones. So you thought we'd throw them out. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, That's a good that one. was a good one. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna let yeah, Mary talk here, yeah. and I think then we're gonna we're getting close, Andrew. We're over about a minute already, but we're gonna let Mary talk about what they discussed at their table, and and we'll continue on if if people got some time. Maybe we'll do one more after Mary, and then go then go from there. I know Dr. Lee is gonna come up. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mary, what did you guys kind of discuss at your table that you thought was interesting or relevant for you? Well, I, w uh, I was listening into to Dennis's um, uh, piece and and the the shift that he's making in his business and the fact that he's been working at this process for a while. Yeah. And he's been trying to 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 clue, more clearly define who the customer is and where they're. Uh, where his customers want to go with the products and services that he offers. Um, from my own perspective, my own, I, I'm in the, the process of trying to make some certain decisions about going into the jewelry business again, it, but also defining the defining specifically uh, who the customer is and 
putting it down on paper is an exercise I hadn't done. Intuitively, yeah. you know it. But it's another thing to put it on paper and say, oh, yeah, that's where I'm aiming. That's where I'm trying to go. That exercise I had not been through yet. So yeah. this was a great opportunity to put that and, and start that. So now I'm going to put it on a bigger scale piece of paper and map it all out, you know, yeah. and, and begin to, feel, again, not trying to overthink it, but to give it some clarity so that I, yeah. as I start to write pieces and stuff that I'm aiming at that person or persons, because I've thought of a couple of other people that might, might fit nicely with this. Ah, very good. Very good. Yeah. Well, that's great. Do yeah. you have to think at our table, um, the Ron Craig, um, was particularly doing this as well, which was really interesting. It keeps visuals, you know, of the clients, you know, that he's developed. So in creating content and stuff like that, he's actually seeing it. Yeah. You know, seeing them in, you know, he says, you know, it, uh, um, it takes it even a, a step further, taking it out of, out of paper and, and, ah, here he comes. There he Let is, do right it. there. I tried to bring Dr. Ilya up, but let's have uh, Ron talk a little bit. And then, uh, yeah, thanks a lot, Mary. I saw what you were trying to pull there. I saw that uh, prompt. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. One thing that uh, I like to do because I work with, uh, you know, especially with uh, having, you know, many clients in, in, in social media is I like to actually have, whether it's a text representation, a lot of times it is, but it's really because whenever I get a new client, I always send them and ask them, you know, I work with them with their ideal persona uh, that they're trying to hit. So, so whether I'm working for my own business uh, to get a client, or I'm or I'm working on be on their behalf to yep. target a, a, a client or, or target audience, I use both persona target audience. I actually usually just uh, put that up there on my screen while I'm whether I'm creating content, whether I'm talking to somebody about it, whether I'm uh, collaborating, just to, so I always have a picture of you know who or or many. Because you know, one thing that we talked about too with uh, Andrew and I and and Adam was you know the idea of connecting the dots. Because you know you may actually have multiple layers of those personas that you're trying to get to, and their persona may actually have a final target, and you may actually have to step along that path to get to that final target. So you actually may be having to work in like let's say five iterations and say, and like I mentioned, that's how I got you know uh, Gary Vaynerchuk to uh, to feature me that time was, you know, to work my way to Gary Vaynerchuk took, you know, me actually understanding the path <clears throat> and connecting the dots to get to that area. Yeah. And yeah, that's that, really good. That. Really good. So Gretchen, what, what are your thoughts around that? I, I think that that's fantastic. And it's a conversation actually Kurt and I have had on a number of occasions that, you know, especially from that business to business perspective to know it's not just that your persona there it could be the persona's persona so yeah. one level deeper i it's a fantastic point and a great realization thank you for bringing awesome. that up to the awesome. discussion well My pleasure. well Ron, I think thank you very much we're gonna we're gonna drop you off the stage here i've been trying to bring dr Ely up if i don't know if he's guys camera off but we're gonna we're gonna stop where andrew's giving me the shake of the head saying we are out of time we are <laughs> the, the, the box on this thing so i just want to say thanks andrew go ahead and conclude us out we'll go back to the tables gretchen kurt awesome stuff once again go for it andrew boom <laughs> great turnout no, i don't mind this one going over a little bit that great topic you know i think Ultimately, to that one point, at, at, you know, that Ron brought up, bring, ask your, you know, clients what their persona reveals a lot, you know, and that's, it's something we started to do recently and, and the answers you get is really revealing. Um, and I think, um, you know, the connecting the dots, you know, uh, and understanding the pain points. Thank you, Gretchen, taking it to that level, I think answers Jeff's question and, and around his table is that, yeah, there's so many different things, but once you get past the the demographic breakdown that's just the starting point it doesn't you know maybe a male but it's still there are still female business owners out there etc but you still get to the same point when you start talking about the common frustrations and such but awesome stuff um we're gonna go back to the tables again um and you know networking will continue as long as people want to hang out please do um it was excellent chat session today what do we got for next 
we come out we... with the final tomorrow, man. I've, I've got a couple yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the process, you know, and, and uh, it's August. I am going to get it out. I'll, I'll get the, the invite out over the weekend and, and with the title and everything. But hey, thanks everyone for coming. I love the interaction. Kurt, Gretchen again. Um, we will have the information how to contact Gretchen or Kurt in the um, both on the YouTube video when it goes up this weekend on our web page, all that. But find Kurt or Gretchen on LinkedIn for now. Uh, and we'll go back to the tables. So. Thank you so much for this this time together. This was really cool. I loved it. And I, I hope that we all walk away with some takeaways today because it was neat time. Good, Thank good. you. All right. Thank you, Gretchen. All right. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks, guys.